Hi, welcome to a continuation of our introduction to unconstrained optimization within a course on optimal and robust control at CTU in Prague. Here in this lecture, we are going to investigate quadratic functions. In particular, I'm going to restrict ourselves just to, uh, to functions of two real variables, just for the ease of visualization, but all the conclusions that we are going to arrive at here will be valid for, valid for general and dimensional vector spaces. So we are going to investigate functions that are given by the following expression. where once again x is a pair of two real variables x1 and x2 and q q is a matrix with real entries and b b is a column vector of real entries as well Now, uh, in order to find first order necessary conditions of optimality, we need to get a gradient of f. How do we find the gradient? Well, in the real case, in the I mean, in the scalar case, in uh, f for a single real variable, the answer would be easy. It would be q times x plus b right but how can i tell uh, in the vector case should it be q transposed or x transposed or b should it be like this or again transposed this is always quite confusing so let's now have a look at how this could be found systematically so the advice here is rather than looking directly for a gradient let's now look for the for uh, the differential of f and only after we find it we will identify the gradient from it because by definition the differential of a function is derivative times times the differential of the independent variable so now once we uh, get this expression on the right hand side we will identify the, the first derivative and by our convention we know that this will be equal to gradient of f transposed. So let's now let's apply this procedure to to our quadratic function. So d of f when finding the differential we will proceed in the same way as we differentiate functions. That means uh, as we are arriving as we are encountering here a product of two functions have a look uh, one function is x transposed and the other one is q times x we first find the differential of the first function and multiply it by the second term intact and then add the first term left intact times the differential of the second term let me now show you what i mean so here I will have one half times uh, differential of the first term times the other term left intact plus the first term left intact times q times the second term, the differential of the second term. And then plus b transpose times dx. Now, one neat trick that we can do here in order to massage this into, into this product form over here, the trick is that we can take this term and we can transpose it, right? Why, why not? It's a scalar anyway, so transposing a scalar, you are always left with the same scalar. So let's do it. So one half over... Now transposition of a product of terms uh, leads to, to a product with reversed direction and individual terms are transposed. Right. So we have x transposed times q transposed times dx plus x transposed q d 
dx plus b transpose dx. And we can further simplify this into x transposed times uh, q transposed plus q divided by 2 times dx plus b transposed dx. And finally I will write it as x transposed times q transposed plus q divided by 2 plus b transposed times dx. And clearly in this expression we can identify the derivative which is which is this term over here. This is our derivative of our function f. Hence the gradient the gradient of f is equal to the transpose of derivative by our convention and it will be uh, it will be q transpose plus q divided by 2 times x plus b. Now uh, provided the q function the, the q matrix was symmetric the term over here simplifies just to q. So let me now write down the expression for the for the gradient here as indeed q times x plus b. Now in order to find the the first or the necessary condition we put the gradient equal to zero. Hence, we need to solve an equation. Q times x is equal to minus b. Solutions to this equation or set of linear equations give us the critical point. Now, note that in principle you could write it as minus Q inverse times b, which is certainly correct mathematically but please never ever solve the set of equations numerically by calculating by calculating the inverse function for instance if you are in matlab you always uh, certainly use use it as q backslash b right so this is for the first order necessary conditions. How about the second order conditions? We know that we need to find the Hessian of the function x, which can be obtained trivially from the gradient, differentiating the gradient, following the same procedure, and the answer is q. So now, uh, based on q, we can uh, classify We can classify the problem in, or the critical point into several scenarios. We can have minimum, we can have maximum, we can have a settle point, we can have a singular point, which in fact does not constitute an independent category. It's just that based on the second derivative we cannot tell. And now it's uh, perhaps the right time to have a look at a few examples. So example number one, our matrix Q will be given as 1, 1, 1, 2, and our matrix B will be given as 0 and 1. Now, have a look at uh, how, the, how the critical point and the eigenvalues of, of the Hessian look like. So obviously the critical point is 1 minus 1 
and the eigenvalues of the Hessian are both positive. So we can even before plotting the graph of the function, we can conclude that the function has a minimum at the point one minus one. Indeed, and indeed this is the case if we have a look at the at the graph of the function. You can see from all possible viewpoints the point uh, one minus one indeed behaves as the local and in fact global minimum as well. You can have a look at the same information or you can find the same information in the contour plot. All right, now let's have a look at uh, another another example. Here I will leave everything intact. I'll just change the sign of the first entry in the matrix queue. Once again, what are the uh, what is the uh, critical point here? It's the point at minus one third and minus one third, and the eigenvalues of the Hessian are one is positive and one is negative. This is perfectly satisfying the condition of a settle point, and indeed, this is what the graph of the function confirms. We can also have a look at the same information from a different viewpoint for, uh, by looking at the contours. And now let's have a final, final look at at uh, at the matrix that is singular. Say matrix that looks like this. Now, in general, because the critical point uh, can be found by solving solving the linear set of equations, uh, in general, this in general this uh, set of equations does not have a solution, which is the case here. We can check. We can check here that indeed, even Mathematica here complains that the linear uh, equation does not have a solution. So we cannot even find a critical point. Uh, there is no critical point here at all. And this is also confirmed by the graph of the function. Have a look at it. Perhaps it's not quite clear from this viewpoint, but from this viewpoint, it's pretty clear that the function keeps decreasing. And if we, uh, since we are considering unconstrained problems, so it will keep decreasing forever. So there will be no finite vector x for which the function assumes minimum. But now, what if, what if we uh, change uh, change the vector b over here? So instead of instead of uh, one, zero one, we will have one zero. In this particular case, this equation does have a solution. The right hand side lives in the range of, of the matrix Q. And so let's do it to see what the solution is. So see solution the critical point is at minus one half zero the eigenvalues are obviously two and zero so the necessary condition of optimality is satisfied and have a look at the graph of the function Obviously, something got wrong. Yeah, yeah, it's, it was correct all the time. It's just that this point is hardly visible here. 
So that doesn't look that much uh, different from what we've seen before. It's only that now from the perspective of one of the two functions of the ex one of the two variables, x2 variable, the function does not decrease at all. So in fact, instead of uh, just a single point here, you could view, you, you could view uh, or you could identify a whole line of critical points. So anywhere along the x2 axis, you are at uh, at the minimum value of the function. So you such points on the x2 axis qualify as the local minimum. And that's it.